Hello, I'm Dr. Vernon Stubblefield with the Department of Chemistry at Eastern Kentucky University. And today we're going to do the experiment entitled Determination of Molecular Weight. Um, we're going to do this by a technique known as freezing point depression. Now, let me explain what molecular weight is first. Uh, molecular weight is a very important quantity in chemistry. Molecular weight is the number of grams of a pure substance that uh, represents Avogadro's number of those uh, units of that pure substance. Since Avogadro's number is uh, in chemistry known as a mole, it, uh, molecular weight definition then becomes the number of grams of a pure uh, molecule or pure substance in one mole of that substance. And uh, in stoichiometric calculations, and I'm sure somewhere in your lecture back you have done stoichiometry, uh, you know that molecular weight is very useful to convert grams to moles or to convert moles back to grams. Now, since we can't count numbers of particles, uh, we have to weigh things out. Then molecular weight becomes that conversion factor between, uh, between mass and between counting numbers of particles. And again, that's a very important quantity in chemistry. Um, we are going to determine the molecular weight of an unknown. We're going to do this by something called freezing point depression. Now, freezing point depression is an example of a colligative property. And a colligative property is, in chemistry, is a property which depends only on the number of particles of a substance and not on what they are. Some examples of colligative properties would be vapor pressure lowering or vapor pressure lowering of a solution. Uh, boiling point elevation of a solution, the osmotic pressure of a solution, and again, as we're doing here, the freezing point lowering of a solution. Now, let me again uh, interject here and explain that when we talk about solution and solvent, when we talk about solvent, we're talking about a pure solvent, such as pure water, and today we're going to use pure water, distilled water, and we're going to mix an unknown with that that is completely miscible or mixable with it, and then we're going to determine the freezing point of both the pure solvent water and the solvent with the unknown mixed in with it. And we're going to observe the lowering or the depression of that freezing point. And again, this is a colligative property and we can use this to determine the molecular weight of the unknown substance. Um, I have in front of me uh, a couple uh, of substances you should be very familiar with. One is uh, antifreeze. You know, in your automobile you have to have antifreeze to lower the freezing point of water so that your block doesn't bust, your, your water doesn't freeze and your block bust. Here is uh, some rock salt that you pour on the sidewalk to melt the ice uh, or to melt the ice on the pavement so we can drive vehicles and we can walk safely. And so these are both examples of this freezing point lowering. We're lowering the freezing point of water and uh, so that uh, we don't have problems at home and with our cars. So let me put these aside right now. And uh, let's go now to how we're actually going to conduct the experiment. Uh, I have a beaker, a large beaker, and we're going to make a uh, salt solution. First of all, I'm going to take uh, a smaller beaker here, and I'm going to uh, pour in some ice. We're going to make a cooling bath here, so we need to make, uh, we need to put some ice. And then we need to, uh, this is a beaker filled with uh, rock salt, and we're going to put a layer of rock salt here. Again, you need more ice than rock salt now, so don't flood it with, don't flood it with uh, salt. And then another layer of ice. I'm using my hand here. I don't think the ice is going to damage my hand at all. But I'm careful with other chemicals that I don't touch them. And we're going to pour some more rock salt into here. That's so. Kind of level it up. And then we'll come back with some more, with some more ice. Uh, there may be some melting that takes place. Don't worry about that. You can always pour out a little bit of that uh, uh, of that water, and in fact, it's probably advantageous to have a little bit of water in there so that uh, uh, there's intimate contact made between uh, uh, the 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 ice mixture and the apparatus. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Just a minute. There we go, and I think we'll another scoop of rock salt and. Uh, that probably is good enough. Now, uh, we've made this bath, and uh, you know that that's going to get cold, very cold. And I have in front of me here an apparatus. It's a, um, a glass tube, 
that has a thermometer and a stirring apparatus uh, in it, and there's a double hole uh, uh, rubber stopper holding these together. Now, when you when you take this, make sure it's on degree centigrade. There's two little switches, and uh, there's an off-on switch. Be sure and turn it on, and you can read the temperature right off of this dial. Now, be careful when you're stirring, because you're going to want to stir your mixture here, your uh, your uh, uh, the solution we're working on, uh, stir slowly, just make sure you don't damage the thermometer in any way. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to weigh uh, some water out. So I'm going to uh, take the apparatus apart uh, momentarily. And uh, I'm going to use a, uh, a beaker here. And I have a graduated cylinder with about 25 milliliters of water. You don't need more than that, about 25, but it doesn't have to be exact. So I'm going to pour tw approximately 25 milliliters of water into a beaker, and I'm going to put it on the balance. First thing we're going to do is zero the balance, and then I'm going to put uh, the water there, and uh, the number I get here will be different from yours. I'm getting 97.425 uh, grams. You will record that uh, in, your, uh, in your recording sheet. And then I'm going to take this, and um, I'm going to pour it uh, down in the apparatus, okay? And uh, let me set that back up. And now I'm going to reweigh the beaker. You know, there's a little residual water here, and so we don't want to get a weight for that residual water left in here. And I get 71.434 grams. Now this is the beaker without the water. Now the difference will be the weight of the the weight of the water that's in your apparatus. Okay, I re-zero that balance. Now let's assemble the apparatus. I'm simply going to put the. Uh, the apparatus back together. Again, being careful that I don't damage uh, anything. All right. And now we want to take our apparatus with the thermometer and stirring bar, and we want to carefully immerse it down into the cooling bath. Okay. Now, observing the thermometer carefully, you need to begin now recording temperatures. Just every few seconds, read the thermometer and record the temperatures, and you can actually put that on the back of your experimental sheet. Now, what you want to do is you want to record the temperatures until the temperature becomes relatively constant. You get about three temperature readings, three or four temperature readings that are constant. Now, as you're doing that, you may notice in the apparatus some ice forming, and uh, using the little stirring rod, just stir that up and down and, uh, and read the thermometer until you get about three constant readings. And at that point, that, those, those constant readings will be the freezing point of pure distilled water. Okay, when that is finished, then take it out and put your hands on it and remelt that ice. You can stir, and the warmth of your hand will melt that slush. The temperature will go back up slightly, uh, get it a few degrees higher, and then reimmerse the apparatus back into the bath and repeat this whole process as I've shown you again until you get again three temperature readings. And, they, and those readings should be fairly constant, uh, close to each other. Now, once we've done that, we need to then make a solution. Because remember, freezing point depression compares the properties of a pure solvent with the properties of a solution of that solvent. So I'm going to take the apparatus and put it back up here. And uh, I have another graduated cylinder that has about six to seven milliliters of an unknown that you're going to be given. So don't, go, don't do more than seven, but somewhere between six and seven is very good. I'm going to take another dry beaker, and I'm going to pour these uh, about six and a half milliliters of this unknown into here. I'm going to re-zero my balance and weigh this unknown. Uh, your value again is going to be different from mine, but you're going to get a, here I've got about 70.489 grams. Record that in the space in your manual. And we're going to take that off, and I'm going to undo the apparatus, and I'm going to pour this unknown down into here. Again, if there's a little bit left over, don't worry about it, because we're going to re-weigh on the balance. So I re-zero. I weigh again the empty beaker, and this time I get 64.459 grams. And that will again be recorded in the space 
uh, on your experimental sheet. Now, um, carefully, I want to mix this up good using the little stirring apparatus here. It's a little bit unwieldy, but if you work with it, you'll get on, catch on to it. And now put the stopper securely down in there, and we want to go back, and we want to repeat the, the uh, lowering of the temperature again. So I'm going to place it back in there, and then begin to record the temperature of this mixture. Now, as, as, we, as I'm recording that temperature, I will stir uh, slightly, and as we get to some point, you'll probably have a slush in there, a mixture of ice and, and, and water. Uh, but again, the process is to record the temperature until we come to a constant temperature again, three or four constant readings. And then once that happens, I want to war take it out and warm the apparatus with my hands. Uh, the temperature will go back up some and then put it back down in here and repeat that all over again until you get, again, three or four constant readings. At that point, you've collected all the experimental data that you need uh, to uh, determine this molecular weight of this unknown that you've put in here. So now let's go over here to the board. I want to show you some charts and graphs that I have prepared. Um, the first chart uh, an ideal freezing point uh, determination chart in which we're plotting temperature versus time. And if you notice, the, uh, the liquid uh, temperature is slowly uh, decreasing. And it, uh, at some point, uh, then uh, the temperature stops decreasing and becomes constant. There are several readings here constant. Now, this, uh, these temperature readings represent the freezing point uh, of this liquid and uh, you will observe in the test tube at that point a mixture of solid and liquid. Our second chart shows uh, a non-ideal freezing point case, again plotting temperature versus time. And you notice uh, that you may get uh, two types of behavior here. One, the, uh, uh, the cooling curve may, instead of coming straight down, may curve off slightly and then become a constant value, kind of a gradual leveling off or it may actually dip below the actual freezing point, uh, which represents a super cooling effect, and then jump back up uh, and then to a series of constant readings. So if you uh, have some of this behavior, don't worry about it. Uh, often we have non-ideal uh, situations uh, in, the, in the physical chemistry. But again, just take the constant readings to be the freezing point of the mixture or of your of your pure solvent. Okay, now our third chart shows how we're going to do a calculation of our molecular weight of our unknown. Uh, the following equation uh, shows that the molecular weight is equal to a freezing point constant, K sub F, multiplied times uh, the mass and grams of your unknown, divided by delta T, which I'll explain in a second, then multiplied by, divided again by the kilograms of solvent. Now, K sub F is, a, is known as a freezing point depression constant. Uh, every different solvent has a different value for this freezing point depression uh, constant. And Kf is equal for water to minus 1.86 degrees centigrade per molal, uh, a term which is very close to molar concentration. So it is degrees centigrade per molar concentration. In other words, a one molal solution of your unknown uh, in a kilogram of water would lower the freezing point by minus 1.86 degrees. Now, the delta T term is, is uh, by equation, the middle equation here, is the temperature at which your solution freezes minus the temperature at which your solvent freezes. That is going to be a negative number. But don't worry about it because if delta T is negative and Kf is negative, a negative divided by negative is a positive, so your molecular weight will come out to, to be positive. So just plugging in the formula, your Kf value, minus 1.86 degrees centigrade per molal, multiplied times the grams of the unknown uh, liquid that you were given, divided by the change in temperature, the delta T, and divided again by the kilograms of solvent. And notice uh, you weight out your, uh, your solvent uh, water in grams. You must convert that to kilograms. Uh, otherwise, your molecular weights will be off by 1,000. So this equation should give you a successful calculation of the molecular weight of your unknown. And now, uh, using that equation, you should be successful in determining the molecular weight of your unknown. 
and uh, hope you've enjoyed this experiment. It is not difficult to do. It's short. And just be careful with your temperature readings. And uh, when you finish, be sure you clean up your workstation. You can pour any water out down the drain, but your ice and salt mixture should go back in a special receptacle in the back of the room. And uh, hope you have a good day. Thank you.